guys and welcome back to Unjaded Jade. Welcome to this little study with me, Pomodoro working style. You may have heard of the Pomodoro technique, but it's quite a common technique used to increase productivity, used by business people and for schoolwork, especially for revision timetables and quite intense focused time. As the video progresses, I'm sure you'll understand the technique and who knows, maybe you might find it useful to implement into your own routine to increase some productivity and reduce distraction. So as you saw, before I started anything, I wrote a rough to-do list of everything I wanted to complete that morning, just have a bit more structure. And then I went about finding a timer I liked on the internet, though to be honest, you can just use your phone, a watch, or just a clock in your room. So the Pomodoro technique. Developed by Francesco Cirillo in the 1980s, it is based off breaking down your work into small timed intervals called pomodoros of a specific time length. You decide the task that needs to be done, you set the pomodoro timer, which is exactly 25 minutes, and then you get to work. During your Pomodoro, you must have no distractions, AKA no phone. Um, and if you get distracted or lose focus, you should restart the Pomodoro. The idea is that you get into a focused zone for a short, manageable length of time with a set task. And at the end of your 25 minute Pomodoro, you set a five minute break timer. And research has proven that giving your brain regular breaks helps in retaining information and prolonging your focus. So the overall plan is that you do four Pomodoros, each with a five minute break in between, and at the end of four Pomodoros, you get a longer break of 15 minutes. As you can imagine, having such a set focused time to work on a specific task increases your productivity, motivates you to get it done before the timer runs out, and also makes work seem more manageable by dividing it into chunks. So as this video goes on, I will discuss what I do and I don't like about this technique. But yeah, I just thought it would be quite a useful thing to try as I've never really done this kind of structured timed working style. So for my first 25 minute Pomodoro, I set about doing some biology revision. I had a chapter 18 test coming up and what I like to do for biology, because it's so dependent on the mark scheme, whether or not you get the answers right, I like to go through and find all the past paper questions relevant to that chapter that I can, print them all off, do all the questions to my best ability, go through mark schemes and correct my answers. And then I like to produce a common question list. So these can be questions that are specifically common to that chapter or questions that sort of come up a lot, like why are ratios better? And just answers like, oh yeah, more comparable and different starting numbers. And yeah, so sort of common questions like that and sort of just putting them all in one place so that I can come back to them when I have less time to revise and still have quite a good grasp of the kind of questions that you get asked without having to redo all of them again. I swear so much of my life is just preparing for exams and finding ways to make my life easier when it comes to revision, etc. But yeah, as you can see, I finished this. So I just ticked it off of my little list in my planner and I still had some time on the Pomodoro clock. So I decided to file that away and begin prepping my next Pomodoro because why not? So you shouldn't waste time in your actual Pomodoro at the start of Pomodoro preparing like sheets and stuff. So I just decided to end my time doing that. And before I set the break timer, I just wanted to make sure that everything was ready to go and I feel like it is quite motivating when you get everything ready because it's a lot easier to just start and sit down and do work. And my next Pomodoro was just writing out flashcards from my lesson notes for biology again. And I think it is important to choose tasks which are manageable for one Pomodoro session or if you think they'll take longer, planning two Pomodoro sessions. But yeah, I just started my five minute break and I decided to do a bit of yoga and stretch it out because just sitting down at my desk all day just makes me feel kind of rubbish. This is just really quick, like random poses that I felt like doing at the time. As I say, five minutes isn't that long. So I think I spent like three minutes just doing some stretches and this is sped up. Any kind of movement can just really help get your brain back in the zone and make you more refreshed when you go back to your desk. Also, I don't know about you, but I do think it is quite good how it holds you accountable for the length of time that you spend having a break because I know that if my break extends about half an hour to an hour, I just kind of lose motivation and I keep doing some other more exciting thing. So the fact that you do get a break is good, but it's short enough that it kind of still keeps you in the zone and you can't stray too far 
or get too distracted. <laughs> and this also gave me time to go to the toilet, which was great. So that's what I did while the timer just finished its five minutes. I am actually quite interested to know how you plan breaks into your schedule or if you take regular breaks or if you prefer to do like long haul revision and then just like have like a massive break and not do any after that. So yeah, how do you guys take breaks and do you take them and do you find them useful? And then ba bam back at it again with yet another Pomodoro. So I just set the 25 minute timer again and I went about summarising my lesson notes. It was about stem cells and totipotency and fun stuff like that. So I just made some flashcards and I do think it's so important that when you make these revision resources like flashcards, you don't literally just copy down your lesson notes because that's so pointless and you might as well just keep your lesson notes if you're going to do that. So yeah, make sure that in some way you are summarizing them or putting them just in a much nicer format and that you are engaging with the stuff that you're writing as you write it. So you should be kind of thinking about it or trying to learn it as you do it and that sort of thing. Um, as opposed to passively just copying it out. I also went to my biology textbook and I read the subchapter and mentally did the summary questions just to like test my understanding. I also read the little application stuff equally to test my understanding and I also wanted to see if I had missed anything in my flashcards that perhaps my lesson hadn't mentioned. A big perk of the Pomodoro technique is that in the little extra time before the timer runs out, you do go the extra mile just to do things like looking in your textbook. And then as you can see, the timer ran out. My storage actually ran out, so I didn't realize that the camera had stopped filming. And then I filed those sheets away, just, you know, organization, ticked the thing off of my little to-do list in my planner and I wanted to go about starting planning my next Pomodoro, which I also looked on my to-do list for. So before starting my break, I just got out paper, my maths textbook, my little identities thing, because at the time I hadn't learnt them, I actually recently went and learnt them. And I didn't film my break, because I don't think it was terribly exciting, but I'm pretty sure I just went downstairs and made myself another herbal tea because herbal tea is just my favorite thing to accompany me when I'm doing any form of work. And then I came upstairs and I started yet another Pomodoro. This time I was just doing some review exercises for maths. And I do like to do this as frequently as possible and just revisit a chapter that we did literally months ago, ages ago, particularly ones that I tend to avoid that I found really difficult and just try and make sense of them again. Just kind of try and remind myself of what I'm doing. And this one was actually quite disheartening because I just, for some reason, wasn't getting it. And I had to go through the painstaking struggle of reading the textbook answer, which was not the answer I had, and not be able to see any work solutions. So it basically meant that I had to go back, try and find out where I was going wrong, and basically figure it out myself. As tempting as it is to look up a mark scheme or look up work solutions straight away, I do think that the process of you sitting down, continuing doing the awful questions that you keep wrong and literally trying to pick through what you are doing wrong is the process that will make you remember it more for the future. So that's what I did. It wasn't particularly fun, but you know, as I say, the Pomodoro timer kind of keeps you in that zone. You know, there's no escape for that time length. So I did my best to just kind of figure out what I was doing wrong and I did realise that I was just making one stupid mistake in my process which was causing the answer to always come out wrong. So I did figure that out eventually. So yeah, I just continued with that and I also went through kind of looking at my answers when I could. For some people, maths is kind of their strength and it comes very easily. But for me, I would say I'm naturally not a maths person and I don't pick it up very quickly. I feel like when I've got it, I've got it. But yeah, so just to inspire anyone who feels like they're not naturally good at maths, you can do it, it just takes more work. Um, and then I also did some more review exercises from a different bit of the chapter because I felt like I finally had gotten that bit and my storage ran out again, so haven't got the rest of it filmed. But then I just started another break and again, I can't really remember what I did, but I don't imagine it was that exciting. Our house was freezing that day because our heater had broken. So I did put my bathrobe on and I wore it for the next Pomodoro as well, because why not? <laughs> and because maths was one of my priorities that day, my next Pomodoro was also spent doing A-level maths. 
So I went through my little flashcards that I made and sort of just revised the important bits of the chapters and just sort of going through the worked solutions and look at harder examples as well. I also just looked over the identities and the uses of different identities, etc. Not very fun watching me doing flashcards. So while you enjoy this really exciting clip, I thought I might as well chat about the pros and cons I found of this technique and then hopefully you can make a decision about whether you think you should try it or implement it into your own routine. So as for the pros, I think it definitely increased my focus on the thing that I was doing because you've decided you've carved out this time to do that one task so you kind of get yourself into a little zone and especially because you've got no distractions and you don't have your phone lingering there because you've made the conscious decision to invest your time into this piece of work. It definitely increases your productivity in terms of being focused. I also find that it's not too long. Like one Pomodoro, 25 minutes is quite manageable. So it does kind of feel like you're not just sat there working for hours on end. And equally you are allowed breaks. How you have the breaks kind of planned into the routine already, I think that's quite good. Equally, it forces you to plan your work ahead and to actually decide what you want to do. And therefore you're also prioritizing and kind of estimating how long things will take. And equally you have the pressure to Work kind of quickly and concisely because you have got the pressure of time limit, which I think is also good because some of us can waste time, you know, every now and then. As for the things that are not so good about this, I would say it's quite rigid, which some people can find less motivating. I think it depends on what mood you're in. If you find that you just don't really do much work anyway, then maybe you need this rigidity. I also found that sometimes the Pomodoro was maybe not enough time and you're kind of in the middle of something but then the time has stopped and you're like well I might as well take my break but then equally you can just have another Pomodoro so I don't think that's that much of a con. I also kind of want to say that five minute break is quite short although it probably is for the best. As I said it also does require you to plan your work which some people might see as a con because it's harder to just rock up and start working because you kind of need to plan something to do in the time and equally it does require a quiet area with no distractions in order for you to do it effectively. Although mate you should be working in an area that is quiet with no distractions anyway. <laughs> so upon reflection and upon having done the technique I would recommend using this when you want to do some revision and you've got like a revision timetable, this is perfect to schedule small snippets of work into. Or if you are lacking motivation and you're coming home from school and you just want to do nothing and you know you don't want to do your work, then I feel like the Pomodoro technique is a really good way to almost force you into doing work and doing work of set amounts of time so that you can't just be tempted to have a break. So if you're lacking motivation, give it a try just any kind of focused work I think is best for this. Things like writing flashcards don't really matter as much so I don't think it's as necessary to use the Pomodoro technique. But yeah if you ever have a very long seemingly unmanageable to-do list I would definitely recommend giving this a try. So as you can see I finished my four Pomodoros and I earned my long break which is a 15 minute break Although I'll be honest, I did just go and have lunch and probably spent like an hour doing no work. I will definitely be using this again and I really hope you enjoyed this video. So thank you so much for watching and please hit the thumbs up if you would like more videos on sort of my revision techniques or how I revise productively. Bye!